Now finally, let's have a look at the post goods issue. The post goods issue marks the completion of logistics execution and the start of the shipment. This means that the goods have now left the plant and is en route to the customer. When we do a post goods issue or PGI in SAP, it carries out of a number of important steps. There are more, but these are the most important ones that you should know. The first thing it validates the document to see that all of the fields that it requires um, ha has been correctly populated yeah, so that the document can be posted. For example, it makes sure that the storage location has been there, the picking has been done, and so forth. Also, when you do the PGI, based on the material movements, which we will look in the demo, it changes the status of the stock and, if relevant, posts a GL accounts. For normal deliveries, this means that the stock is reduced in the plant and for stock transport orders, the material will uh, be reduced in that plant and it will be moved into a in-transit status. The document is then marked as complete. The sales order is updated to say that the delivery is complete, right? Uh, and in most cases, the order or that quantity is made relevant for billing. If configured, we will now create some outputs using the message output procedure. This could be a simple uh, ASN document or delivery note. Um, we could even create an EDI to send an ASN to the customer. The PGI can be done by using the transaction VL02 by pressing the post goods issue button. Another way of doing this is to use the collective transaction VL06 and in there there's a collective button that says post goods issue. If you are using shipments, we will have a look later but just note for now that the PGI can also be done in the shipment complete button and well, I'll cover that in the shipment lectures later on. A final note, uh, if you can reverse a, tra uh, via a transaction, so, i.e. you can reverse the PGI by using the transaction VL09. This resets the document back into its previous state provided that the invoice has not been created. So, let's have a look at doing a PGI in SAP. So, here is, let's go to the VL02N screen, the change delivery. If I go in, you can see that the pick quantity has been done. And in the document flow, you see that it's been assigned to a shipment. I've done my picking. Everything is complete with this delivery. So if I were to press the post goods issue button here, you can now see that the delivery has been saved. And if I go back to the document flow, you'll see a new document called goods issue. And if I were to display the document, you can see that the system did a 601, which is a negative, it reduces the stock. Uh, and that's it. It's pretty simple. Um, if we now go back into the document, we can also have a look at the accounting documents here. Uh -huh. Give it a second. Oh, there we go. So if I double click on the accounting document, you can then see some GL postings. Uh, from a supply chain point of view, Okay, we know what the GL postings do, but we're not too concerned about what the values are. Now, if I were to go back into the delivery, oops, let's go back into the delivery here, and if I go to goods movement data, you can then, oops, status overview, you can now see that the, the system has updated, uh, saying that TS means everything has been complete. So the delivery now has been complete and confirmed. If I go to the item line view and I go to predecessor data, oops, I've go to administrative data, sorry, you can then see the material movement 601. So what I wanted to show here, um, here is that the 601 movement, as we said before, comes from the material movement value on the schedule line. So when you create a sales order, 
it determines the schedule line. In that, through the configuration, it determines the material movement which it puts on the schedule line of the sales order. When you create the delivery, it then copies that material movement number into the delivery. When you do the PGI, it looks at the material movement number and it executes. Based on the configuration for that material movement, it executes whatever it needs to do. By default, uh, a shipping to customer is a 601 for example, if you look at stock transport order, it'll be a different movement type. That's why when you do a stock transport order, it moves it in transit, for example. Or that's why when you do a return document, you have a different behavior. It's all driven by the material movement. And that is the PGI process. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and if you have configured everything correctly as part of the process, it should be pretty easy to do.